Hello everyone. So welcome to ADC webinars. Today's webinar is third webinar from ADC Inclusive. You all are aware of ADC. So let me take the opportunity to welcome today's speaker, Dr. Madhvi Barai. She is a dental surgeon, graduated from BVP Pune, internationally certified forensic odontologist, cosmetic dentist, and she maintains a state-of-the-art practice at Avdesh Dental Studio, Rajkot. She has a number of cases documented on her name for ozone dentistry, from which few of them uh, for periodontics, as today's topic is ozone applications in periodontology. So let's uh, learn something uh, for these, these ozone applications in periodontics from Dr. Madhvi Barai. Welcome, Doctor. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. All I welcome great. all the participants also today here. And uh, I hope this is an interactive session and a session wherein you learn something new and uh, step towards a no medication dentistry. So welcome you all for Ozone Dentistry 2022. What is ozone and why ozone? That is what we will learn today. There are more than, uh, you know, more than say 260 pathologies that we can deal with when it comes to ozone dentistry. Today we are going to talk about anything that's related to peri. I'm going to try to cover as many cases that I have done and uh, certain cases that sir has also uh, shared with me. So they are beneficial for you all. Right. Uh, in my practice, I do. I am doing ozone dentistry for all the cases: uh, endodontics, periodontitis, implant uh, dentistry, almost all. So, what is ozone dentistry? Ozone is a uh, a tri -ox oxygen molecule, which is known as a um, combination, instable combination of oxygen, wherein this instable form is beneficial when we get the nascent oxygen. So basically this nascent oxygen helps us to uh, treat everything that we consider is inevitable in our practice. So what is inevitable in our practice? The major thing is a biofilm. When it comes to perio, the major uh, need that all periodontists want is the biofilm should not be formed. So first we do is mechanical removal of biofilm that is scaling. And then we make sure that this biofilm does not reoccur, which we try to by uh, polishing. So there are different types of polishings that we use in the practice. The best being remineralizing, remineralizing agents or polishing paste that have remineralizing agents, right? And the third reason, when we went out in spite of doing everything, there is high resistance for uh, new biofilm to not be formed. If that happens, then again the biofilm is formed. Here, ozone plays an important role wherein it breaks down the biofilm and a nascent oxygen is provided which helps any anaerobic bacteria or any biofilm to be formed. Right. So this is how our oxygen O3 molecule looks like and the stable form is O2, the unstable form is O3. Ozone dentistry is practiced in three forms. The uh, three different forms are, one is ozone oil, which is the most stable form. The second one is ozone water, which is aqueous ozone. And the third is ozone gas, which is only made through an ozone generator. Like I said, it's highly unstable. So we need to form it. We need a certain way to generate it. And that's why we need an ozone generator. Currently, since you all, if at all you have ozone generator, of course, these will be beneficial, but you can start with ozone oil from the beginning. Maybe after this lecture, if you feel motivated enough and if you feel like this is going to bring out a change in your practice, you can start with ozone oil. Right? Any pictures that we see in the PPT today are originally clicked in the clinic. Uh, they are my cases. If you have any doubts or anything that you want to share or uh, ask about, you can feel free to at the end of the session. So what are the properties of ozone? Like I said, our main um, motto is that we need to provide an area where anaerobic bacteria or any type of infection, any type of pathogens, any type of microbes do not grow. What do we do generally if we are not an ozone practitioner? We give them antibiotics. So these antibiotics, any kind, anaerobic, uh, some people give uh, heavy doses of antibiotic for um, um, a lot of wide range. 
so the wider the range of antibiotics what you're doing is also you're increasing the uh, capacity or the immune immunity of the uh, microbes but antimicrobial resistance that is a challenge the next challenge that dentistry is going to face ki antibiotic lene ke baad bhi patient ko asar nahi kar because the phagocytes are not able to stop the microbial activity right so the main thing that ozone vouchers for is antimicrobial activity and hence i say that we are moving to no medication dentistry it is an highly effective disinfectant it is an hemostatic agent anti dk remineralizing anti sensitivity immunomodulator it increases the um, you know the immune immunity of the patient that's why an immunomodulator analgesic again you do not need to provide an analgesic to the patient also again moving towards no medication dentistry and it is a natural antibiotic so you will uh, once you start your practice with ozone you will also realize that the effect is chair side you don't have to wait for the patient to call you or you to call to the patient ki is it effective are you feeling better or or you don't have to live in the fact ki shayad antibiotic nahi diya to patient will be unwell it is a sure sure thing that this is going to work so what we do or what i do at my practice is we attack the root cause and that's how i believe ozone works it what is the root cause it's the versatile bio oxidative therapy so what we do is whatever happens happens from the start we make sure that we use ozonated water from chair side whatever chair side input we have in water we ozonate it we start our scaling or we start our uh, cavity preparation with that running in our pipelines and that's why whatever potential pathogens are they will break down the line will be clear of course that's another added on uh, advantage there but in that case you will have to run it down before the patient sits on your chair now since it is a topic that we have related ozone to perio we will keep or learn this first there are four types of practices or four types of patient or four types of doctors that we come across one is no scaling scaling only scaling and polishing scaling polishing and oral prophylaxis today we will focus on scaling and polishing and scaling polishing and prophylaxis i would emphasize on scaling polishing and oral prophylaxis because that's how an ideal uh, practice should be but for any what whatever reason if you're doing scaling and polishing it's fair enough but no scaling and scaling only it's not going to give you the best results i'm sorry so we will start with the first case for today which is sensitivity of teeth this was a female patient 63 year old sensitivity in respect to lower anteriors and bad breath so on uh, check up we found out that she requires a uh, complete scaling there were little few cavities maybe two and they had to be treated so what we did was we did complete scaling we then uh, used gc tooth mousse for remineralization followed by ozone oil application and what you see is immediate post op so when you see immediate post op you'll pay attention to how this is healed like in normal case scenario you will have bleeding or you have bleeding lines even if the bleeding is stopped here there is no bleeding lines there was no medication given no metrogel given after the scaling or any whatsoever any other pace patient was quite happy no sensitivity i think it's already been around 4 months and she's still fine right hyper sensitivity of teeth now this was something where we used ozone oil and ozonated water for gargles during treatment here it's hyper sensitivity of teeth the patient was 56 year old again a female what we did was scaling followed by ozone oil application and immediate post op hemostasis and relief was seen so in hyper sensitivity the patient will not let you touch the teeth only scaler will never touch the teeth the, the patient will get uh, you know hyped up you might have to apply local anesthesia and then start with deep scaling in this case we did not do that what we did is we first treated it with ozone gas gave it a minute or so and then started with Uh, ultrasonic and patient did not have any sensitivity or hypersensitivity this i'm showing this video to demonstrate how ozone oil is applied 
So whenever you start applying ozone oil, start from the incisal edge, drop by drop. It is a viscous uh, material. I mean, the consistency is viscous. So one drop will be enough and you can massage them. I use my finger in this. You can use a profit cup as well. We'll also see how profit cups are used in the next following slides. Hypersensitivity with ozone gas. So we saw ozone water, ozone oil, and now this is ozone gas. It's a 46-year-old male patient, hypersensitivity with deep class 5 abrasions. So in this, again, scaling is always, always, always the first thing you do. Even if it's a filling patient, even if it is something else, do your scaling first. Right? So scaling was done, polishing was done, followed by GC tooth mousse. Ozonated water gargles were given pre-treatment and post-treatment. So usually we tell the patient that ozone te therapy will be an adjunct to whatever we are doing. And there's a certain cost that comes with it. So we charge this. Some patients do not opt for it. And that's why we get a little, uh, you know, uh, we make sure that some form of ozone is then gone to it. So ozonated water goggles were done. And then ozone gas application was followed. So this is how a proper ozone therapy looks like. Uh, the I think the video audio will be on. So before the, I start the video, I'll tell you that when you're using the gas cannula and it is very close to the teeth, the patient's nose has to be blocked with your finger and the suction should follow the cannula. Okay. I'm sorry. See, it follows the cannula. So whatever O3 comes in contact with the tooth, seals the dentinal tubule, release from the hypersensitivity, and excess gas is gone back to the uh, suction tube. Scaling and polishing. This is what perio means to most of us, but let me put it here that perio is way beyond the scaling and polishing. It is way beyond bleeding gums, bad breath, um, say pockets, it's so much more. Right? But this is a, what we see on a regular basis. It's a 34-year-old male, quite young, no habits, uh, good oral hygiene practice as well. But this is the common site of calculus accumulation. Deep scaling and polishing followed by ozone oil application and ozone water goggles. How is ozone water made? I'll show you a video down the line. But again, you need an ozone generator. So that ozone generator is placed in ozone water and in, in normal tap, um, drinking water and uh, we get ozone water in say like two minutes. The life of this ozone water is 20 minutes. So it is in highly uh, unstable form. We have to make and use it right chair side. It cannot be stored. This is hemostasis that I want to show you post scaling. When I say that, you know, scaling ke baad we see those lines or uh, bleeding lines are there. So here the first picture is post-scaling ozone oil application. If you appreciate there are tiny bubbles there on the line. So what are these? This is when ozone is accepted. The nascent oxygen that is released, it shows as these bubbles. And then what you do is you massage it out. Right? Ozonated site is what the lower thing. Now again, this, these are all prosthetic teeth. These are done by me only. They are veneers, all lower six veneers and patient had slight calculus deposited in this area. What we did was scaling, I'll put the video on. See immediate hemostasis, blood clot formation. You will see when my finger rubs it, see? The clot, literally it was a, a bleeding line and now it's clotted and it's done. So these bubbles are when you know that the O3 is acting that the nascent oxygen is getting accepted at the site. Uh, the ozone oil has a life of one year. Uh, you can keep it in your uh, fridge in a cool environment. It is available in a syringe form. You'll see in my pictures also. And that is uh, that has a shelf life of one year. So it's easily and uh, easily available and readily used. Again, a uh, case of hemostasis after crown preparation, 50 year old male. There was a pocket between six and seven, but distal of six. We had given patient uh, in this case before a uh, metrogen, but patient here was very sure he, he does not want to get scaling done. He only wants to get this crown done and nothing else. That's why you see there are still stains and everything. 
Um, then after the uh, ground preparation was done, we did O3 gas application. You can see I've circled out the place. Immediate hemostasis was achieved. We put in a cord, took a nice impression. We didn't have to wait longer. Non-surgical periodontal therapy. So after or while learning this and after learning this, if you can achieve this, you have done a great periodontal job. So if you can save a patient who comes to you in this form, say class grade four calculus, you can see on my left is the lower, right is the upper, and we have taken a clinical picture. Heavy deposits of calculus, patient had mobile teeth, carious teeth, um, bad breath, bleeding gums. Of course, I don't have to tell you the clinical signs and symptoms. We explained to the patient what the overt ozone therapy is, what non-surgical periodontal therapy is, and how are we going to achieve it. Complete scaling and polishing done. Ozone water goggles, chair side ozone water used. Generalized ozone oil application. In this case, I have not used ozone gas. Why I have not used ozone gas? Trust me, that's a personal choice you can make. I am actually trying to do cases with different uh, protocols. So either I use gas and water or I'll use only oil. I'll use water and gas. So these are different uh, categories you can put yourself into or your cases into and try out different things. Right, so this was done. This way, I'll show, I'll show the post op now. Post scaling and post polishing and O3. If you see this case clearly, it is clicked from a phone, the picture. It is clicked on a difference of five minutes. And, and if you appreciate well, there is a shade difference. How did this happen? Or why did this happen? We'll talk about that later. But if you appreciate, there's a good shade difference, no bleeding. No LA was given to the patient. Without LA, this procedure was done. Very deep scaling was done, not like we did superficial scaling. Right? We'll take a minute to see the case and I'll move forward. A lot can be achieved with ozone therapy. This is the same patient, oil application, profile axis or uh, polishing. The video I'm going to turn on to show, like when I said no LA was given, zero sensitivity. So usually what happens when we start scaling, patient hums with us. Uh, 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 it is paining or you know that sound, that, that constant irritation that the patient has because there is pain, because there is sensitivity. So here the audio is on again to show you that the patient was very comfortable and there was no pain. Yeah, so again, we heard no sound from the patient or no noise from the patient. This is how your ozone oil would look like. It comes in this kind of a syringe and you can dispense it easily. You can change the needles. You don't have to dispense the oil separately into a dappling dish or anywhere. It is easily, you know, you can take or use it easily from this form. When I was talking about shape jump, I was talking about teeth whitening. So an added advantage that O3 gives you is a shade jump. It could be one shade lighter. It could get two shades lighter. There are papers and posters presented on this cases documented wherein teeth whitening has showed at least five shades lighter also. So while we're learning about ozone, I'm sure when I was learning, I thought that this is something new. But it is, not, it is a very old science. It dates up to 1870, that was the first time when an ozone uh, case was registered. And in dentistry, a doctor uh, from Zurich, he started documenting cases from 1930. So you can only take it back to timeline and how old this practice has been. Yes, it will be a new, new thing when it comes to your practice. It will be a great boost to your practice. It will help you give patient satisfactory results, chair side. And that's what we ultimately want, right? Even if we are doing scaling or we are doing bleaching or whitening, 
what we want is the patient should be happy at the end of the treatment pain free of course and added to that you are even doing um, you know no medicine so patient would be obviously happy this is another case of female patient or uh, normal scaling and polishing why i have added it here is to show you the shade jump it's two shades lighter we have used ozone oil and that's how i use profi cup after applying ozone oil it's uh, taken slightly towards the gum line and massaged on a very low speed deep gingival pockets uh, this video this time i'll show you how ozonated water is made but in this case uh, again it was a process is done by me a year ago in both 5 and 6 patient later on came with uh, a deep pocket and uh, we demonstrated him how to use a interdental brush which we had already done before again treated it with ozone oil we took almost three sittings and the pocket was healed very well we used ozone water here see this is use of ozone water ozonated oil profi cup and then how the ozone water is made so this cannula is dipped into a drinking glass of water A drinking water, sorry, a glass of drinking water, and keep this in there for sixty seconds. You get a good uh, amount. If you want, if you keep it for a little lesser while, it's also fine. Ten to fifteen seconds is also fine, depending on how big your glass is. I usually do it for thirty seconds, and that pretty much does the job. If I have to ozonate a chair side bottle, it is pretty much a liters bottle, so I do it for sixty seconds. A glass, I would do it for fifteen seconds. This is the ozone generator from where the ozone gas goes to the water. These are radiographic changes. Again, it was a young female patient. She had bleeding from the upper, uh, and she would always complain that her uh, papilla gets swollen uh, every ten fifteen days. What we had done is ozone oil application followed by massage for two minutes. Yeah, when you apply ozone oil, give it a good massage with the profi cup with your fingers. Give it good two minutes for it to soak in and seep in. One because it is thick. Two because it takes a little while for the nascent oxygen to reach the site. Now pain with deep pockets. You always know patient will come with pain and you will have a deep pocket there or there will be a cavity associated with uh, a pocket as well endoperio lesions. But uh, in this case we had a localized scaling. Again patient did not opt for full mouth scaling. That's why ozone oil application followed by profi cup massage and ozonated water goggles. I'm showing you videos so you get to know how easily ozone oil can be applied, and uh, it is not at all a painful or a tedious job. You can see bubbles. You'll always see bubbles, and that is really one satisfying to you know that ozone has nascent oxygen has reached the site. Mm, Extra oral case: chilitis or cracked lip. Patient had come to us for a very different. Um, Chief complained that we had done a root canal and everything, but towards the end of the treatment, he said that uh, doctor, I have dried lips from a couple of months, and uh, I do not know what the reason is. At that point of time, it was winter, but he had this complaint from a couple of months, so dating it back to when it was summer, and he had tried all types of, um, you know, what beauty products, Vaseline, glycerine, everything. So we gave it a shot. we took ozone oil applied two drops on his lips rubbed it out and we asked him to just check out how it is and not to use anything else say vaseline or anything not required he came to us after 3 days we again started off with whatever his chief complaint was by the end of the treatment he said can you please do that again because it never felt so good before ever and i've tried so many things but this felt the best from the third time he didn't have to tell us because it was healed So yeah, this is this can also be done, and some people come to you with ulcers, acne ulcers. You can try ozone oil; it works wonders. Dental implants or surgical therapy, any surgical therapy. If you're doing a full mouth flap, if you're doing an implant surgery, if you're doing, uh, say, hypo pigmentation cases, we do. So deep pigmentation. If you're doing, you can use ozonated saline solution. So what we do usually is we do irrigation with saline solution. Here you have to ozonate the same saline solution, the same protocol. 
the cannula is dipped in saline water 10 to 15 seconds let it ozonate and then you can fill in a 5 ml or 10 ml syringe and keep ozone keep uh, irrigating with that water it will give you a, a bloodless feel you know most surgeons what they want only is good retraction and a good bloodless feel if that is achieved you will do an amazing surgery or the surgeon will do an amazing surgery so try this and this works wonders in my practice so yeah again this is how the ozone works see this is a dental implant hardly any bleeding ozone water irrigation no bleeding can you see that white good bone no bleeding while taking sutures the flap is open and hemostasis is already achieved in other cases we'll have a blood blood filled feel and that pretty much hampers your uh, vision it is a implant in lower seven and yet it was an easy vision Pregnancy granuloma. Now, one thing that I uh, somehow forgot up till now is like we have zero side effects when it comes to ozone therapy or ozone dentistry, ozone therapy in dentistry. One, it is not a treatment that you can whole and solely use. You can, like I showed you a few cases, but it is an adjunct to any dental treatment that you want to do. Perio, endo, ortho, so many. Yeah, we're talking about perio. So it is an adjunct to any periodontal therapy, any periodontal treatment that you're doing. Right? And then when I say this, there are zero side effects. It means that there are no or little or zero side effects even when it comes to pregnancy. This is a nine-month pregnant female patient who came to me, full-term pregnancy, bleeding gums, pregnancy granuloma, a huge pregnancy tumor you can see. And she has ha have been having this tumor since the past three, four months. So even if it touches anything, food or anything, it bleeds. She came to us, we did deep scaling. We applied ozone water. We did ozonated saline solution irrigation. Again, we applied ozone oil, massaged it, zero sensitivity. The granuloma subsided within 24 hours, no pain. And hence, I say it's safe in pregnancy. You have to take care of other protocols. Of course, my chair position or uh, reclining position, everything. But the patient was so happy. that four to five months, I could not find a solution for it. And in 24 hours, it was healed. This, these such cases, they will not show you results chair side because it's been a pathogenic activity from months. So you have to give it time, but no medicine, of course. Okay. And again, in pregnancy, there is a big debate when it comes to giving medicines, right? So here we had given no medicine, nothing to apply locally also, and nothing else. We changed her oral hygiene habits a little bit. We gave her a good paste, a good uh, brush. We taught her about mouthwash and everything. Ortho gingivitis, again a perio ortho case. Uh, after braces or during braces or before braces, usually the patient has a lot of calculus or gingivitis there. This is something which was done after debonding. Complete scaling polishing. It's a case by Dr. Sudhir Dole. And yeah. we had used it for, we have been using it for our uh, presentations. It's a beautiful case where we see that there was bleeding gums before the braces were out. Once it was out, proper scaling and everything was done and healthy. Again, you see a shape difference because teeth whitening comes free with ozone therapy. Uh, Case, a case of puffy gums, redness, and uh, bleeding gums. The patient had severe complaint of bleeding gums and uh, complete scaling followed by normal polishing. Uh, you could Normal polishing means it is not a GC tooth mold. It is another polishing phase, prophylactic phase. That's also good enough. And uh, followed by application of ozone oil. These are plastic tips. You can also use these tips if you are comfortable with. Try to change the tips with every patient and that's highly recommended. Another case, or use of ozone oil and water, a case that I showed you before. 35-year-old female, habit of smoking, heavy deposit of calculus, no cavities at whatsoever and pain with lower anteriors because of course there is heavy recession followed by deposit of calculus. Ozone oil was applied, ozone water gargles, chair side ozone water. So chair side ozone water gives what benefit? 
Yeah. While you are scaling with your ultrasonic tape, you are also getting full supply of ozonated water. So there will be no sensitivity at all. Yeah. Now we're talking about some lesions. So do you, you know an interesting fact that more than eight, I'm sorry, seven hundred lesions can be treated using ozone, um, different types of ozone forms. We all what I have tried is to do a um, betterment in OSMF case. The patient had come for a different reason. Again, she was not very much uh, in, you know, wanting to get the OSMF treated. She had a problem with her wisdom tooth. But I could only reach the wisdom tooth if her mouth opened. And her mouth opening was 9 mm. We then uh, did, I think, three or four uh, sessions, only ozone oil and ozone gas. Two things we have used here. Gas we have used only once and oil we have used in all the sessions. And now her mouth opening is 16 mm. No other steroids or no other hyaluronic acid, anything, nothing else is used here. Again, post-op and pre-op. This is without scaling, just how the patient walked in. After scaling, look at the shape difference. This is the next week and this is the week after. With the probe also, we have tried to take good clinical pictures to show that the pocket has healed. All the pockets will heal. Excuse me. I'm yes. Dr. Krishti. I just have a question. Yeah, sure. How was the gases ozone given? Was it given uh, periodontally by the... Uh, oh, no, it was given on the bands also and... Uh, I had used ozone gas in the first one, like just post scaling. That was the only time we used gas. So we had done it for the pockets and at the lesion, we had the bands. So this was a case that had unilateral bands. Both sides, there were, they were no, no fibrosis was present. Fibrosis was only on one side and gas was applied on the side. Later on, we only used oil. How was the gas applied on the, uh, on the cheek area? I just want to know. Uh, see, I'll show you the cannula. The, the same way we have to apply it on the intraoral side once yeah your cannula has to um, was it cannula, injected at the, uh, at the cheek area the gas this is this cannot be injected it is a cannula it has an open um open-ended, uh, you know, open-ended side. It is just faced towards the fibrosis area. You so cannot the area the is not, like, it's just a cheek. It's a fibrosis there. There are no open lesions on the cheek area. Yes, not. exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so usually the, the gas... Is because the air, the patient will just breathe in through the mouth. No, he will not breathe in. There is a finger that's kept on the nose. The patient okay. is advised not to breathe through his mouth and a suction... Uh, is always following it. Like you have to give it just an exposure time of say five seconds or three seconds and the suction will pull up all the gas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Basically, and... uh, for, uh, for initials, we will advise to start with ozone oil only to not go for ozone gas. I gave an ozone gas because I was looking at three good problems. One was periodontal pockets, deep pockets, Another, she had uh, pain in her lower right, right, in her lower uh, wisdom tooth. So my gas had to reach there also and the fibros fibros part. So fibrosis, um, wisdom tooth and pockets. So first session, that was this part. Here I had done both gas and oil application. Then forward, we had only done oil application. So oil, you have to apply and massage on the fibers. This is still under a lot of, uh, you know, um, research because um, even when it comes to PGs who are doing their PG in, um, oh, um, sorry, perio or um, um, OPAS and uh, uh, OMDR, they do a lot of research on this. There are a lot of paper and poster presentations done on this, a lot of research articles on this. You can try both. Again, water won't be beneficial, but gas and uh, oil are very beneficial when it comes to OSMF. Okay, that's good. So may I know how long is the oil application there and how many times during the treatment? Correct. So what we had done it, in this case, I had done three applications in a span of one week, spaced out in two, two days, say eight days, right? Later on from the second week, we did two applications. 
so depending on how the results are in some cases or in some um, articles that i have read there is not a huge difference today we are seeing here ki 9 mm se leke 16 mm tak ka mouth opening hua hai right this was pretty good enough for us to give her um, to do a opaculectomy we could do some sort of uh, relief for her wisdom too that was her chief complaint keeping that in mind but if the patient has solely come to you for osmf treatment only you can aggravate it so aggravation meaning three times in a week or two times in a week okay so maybe so this is non surgical Sorry, yeah, sorry, I'm just disturbing. Yeah. I think should I stop or may I ask a question? No, no, no problem. You can. Continue. Okay, I want to know that uh, can we just uh, do the application yeah. ourselves or maybe give the oil to the patients for the right. application every day? Yeah, that is a good question. You can do that. You can give out uh, a small amount, dispense it in a uh, carry away bottle, and advise the patient to do it also. In my case, I did not because she was an 18 year old. she was highly um, uh, you know unaware of this situation and not wanting or not uh, you know, jab patient hamare paas aata hai just because she is worried about the osmf we have to do it that way. you can do it you can give away patient few uh, drops of it and ask them to apply one another problem when it comes to when we give it to the patient is the patient should be using it and not misusing it right misuse is a very big uh, thing here because some people think more you be use the more better it will become it's not like that two to three drops is enough so they can uh, use it uh, or apply it using their finger and massage it yes of course you can give it to the patient in very small amounts in generous good amount yeah. okay okay thank you so much no sir so yeah by this we almost come to an end of this and uh, if there are more questions from anybody you can ask these are again few cases see uh, if you appreciate this case this is uh, post extraction so what we do post extraction is we apply ozone gas you can apply ozone oil after suture not before that but ozone gas you can apply in a socket immediate hemostasis this also answers to the question how gas is applied the gas cannula is kept at the side a little away say around 2 or a millimeter away and the gas is directly taken up by the suction so the suction has to be somewhere near approximating the cannula right yeah and just tell me one thing if you don't put the oil inside the socket mm -hmm. won't it affect the feeling like if we if we you can you can put the oil also and then apply gas and then suture it up yeah. but in the, in in any other case if you are applying oil applied after the sutures are taken so the sutures and the gingiva basically oil seeps into the gingival tissue right so you will get a better closure you will get a better view instead okay. of putting it in the socket so like i said you can choose up cases like when you are doing extraction try yourself of applying oil and not taking sutures we do a lot of extractions do not take sutures sometimes So when you're taking sutures, apply oil over the suture. It is in the pack. When we give the pack to the patient, we give the right. oil on. You can do that. Correct. Right. That's good. And one yeah. thing more, like when we use the uh, oil in the during our process, correct. how long do we massage it with our finger? How? Because I just missed it. I'm sorry. I just yeah, yeah, it. no problem. You can massage it from thirty seconds to two minutes, depending on how the situation is. If it's a bleeding site, say I had few cases about wherein we had good bleeding corners, so we did it for approximately one and a half to two minutes. We have a timer here, which is a sand timer, so we put it on. Because for me, two minutes is also like. I feel like it's finished. So I am like that. Ensure everyone is. So make sure you give that time. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay.
you will not inject it you will not put it under the subcutaneous under the gingival uh, layers you will just place the ozone you have to make sure you are take carrying the ozone till the pocket so okay. we don't have, we have to take it on the probe tip or we have to take the no. the, the syringe you have to take it on the syringe tip only so this means we need disposable tips right yeah yes yes you need disposable tips okay yeah but again mind well it is not injected okay it is just carried to that side okay and if this ozone oil is taken internally by the patient is it harmful no it is not it has zero side effects so there are no side effects just the taste is a little uh, the taste so this is basically ozonated olive oil there will be a taste of how virgin olive oil tastes mm -hmm. okay now since you have mentioned about the taste we will also talk about the fact that ozone oil ozone gas has a pungent smell okay so patient or you or uh, whosoever the operator is will get a little irritated with that gas smell but it is um, something that can be overseen seeing the benefits of it so you have to prepare the patient before the gas starts that you do not breathe through your mouth do not breathe through your nose heavily light breathing can be done block the patient's nostrils with your finger and start the ozone gas and ozone gas application is only for 10 seconds not more than that less yeah, than 10 seconds or 10 seconds any side effects if it exceeds 10 seconds there are no a uh, heavy side effects but sometimes you might see a uh, de uh, depigmentation or melanin pigmentation that that starts in that area and that will also subside with time so basically pigmentation due to gas can happen okay. yeah but usually it does not because that only happens in very heavy um, dose applications that which which is seen in medical ozone therapy Not yeah the, how do we get the gaseous ozone like <clears throat> with the ozone generator yeah ozone generator so see this picture here is the picture of an ozone generator the ozone generator has a pipe that is connected and to that pipe is connected connected this cannula so uh, the which is the reading on the ozone generator when you do this is it like how do you like it's 0.12 uh uh, uh Yeah, My it is titrated. Is so there is a titration that is already given here. So utna hi ppm ya utna hi uh, ozone isme se generate hota. And okay. if we have the ozone oil for long, does it uh, degenerate or decompose? Because uh, I think my ozone oil is at least two years old now. I don't know if it's. <laughs> yeah. So basically, its shelf life is one year. but you can if you even after using after one year it will be good but it won't be efficient it won't be as efficient as it should be it means increase so, the quantity yeah yeah <laughs> it we basically say half life but half life is a wrong word to use here it is better said when that the efficiency will reduce so one year is a fairly good time if you are using beyond that you're not going to grade, get great efficiency with the product Okay, and you can keep it in cool place. So, so colder the place stored, a little justice can be done to its shelf life. And in carious lesions, uh, what about ozone uh, oil or in the RCTs? Sorry, I didn't get you. I'm just saying that if we give ozone oil in the carious lesion or uh, during RCT, we inject it in the canals. Yes. Is it safe? Yeah, it is safe. So when you're talking about um, number one, we'll talk about cavities first. So if you're doing cavity um, ozonation of cavity, you have you can do it with gas. Oil will reduce the efficiency of uh, bonding agent or anything else. So oil is not recommended. Even if you're using oil, make sure you have removed the oil completely. Right? Gas is safe because uh, gas say there'll be no residue. Again, it will dry. Keep the uh, cavity dry. so cavity disinfection is what the name for this is that you done cavity disinfection with ozone gas open dentinal tubules get nascent oxygen sensitivity post uh, composite or gic is not felt by the patient it's a added on benefit root canals again you can use ozonated saline solution or ozone ozonated water as an irrigate as an irrigant like you use liquid irrigate or hypo 
there are few researchers that use ozonated hypo but i'm not very much into it and i don't do it i do ozonated saline solution and ozonated water again you can use ozone oil in the canal but do that before you have done your final file so if your final bmt is say till 2506 then do it while you are at 2006 so that the last file will remove the oil from the chamber otherwise this residue of oil is going to hamper with your sealer or the gp uh, how do we remove the oil like yeah that's because yeah. we we, uh, so it the... is a mechanical removal, right? You cannot uh, make sure. But if you are, if you have done your BMP till fifteen o four used oil, and then जब आप twenty o four से करते हो, तो जो dentinal shavings के साथ जो oil है, वो भी निकल जाने वाला है. So this is mechanical removal plus irrigation. Proper irrigation will remove it. If you are using your O three oil after the last file, it is difficult. Then okay. you might have to use another bigger file. Uh, or you know jump from 2004 to 2006 whatever your protocol of filing is if you want to introduce ozone oil in endo use it in between files don't use it after your final file uh, then i think ozone ozonated uh, normal saline is better than to correct yeah so it is less of a tedious job no and uh, ozonated saline solution will give you a better added effect than ozone oil Uh, the canals have to be dry when we give the ozone in the canals. The ozone, ozone? Gas. ozone gas. Yeah, no, no, they do not have to be dry. They and can have ozone 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 ozone. solution in them and you can yeah. give ozone gas. Again, in endo, if you are giving ozone gas intra canal, the um, uh, application time is around again 6 to 10 seconds. Okay. okay. In Anyone? pedo patients, how about pedo patients if we use? Uh, uh, okay, yeah. So in pedo patients, we have used it and it is very uh, safe. We only avoid to use gas in pedo patients just because some obey and some don't. Even if you tell the patient that breathe through your nose, pay, uh, pedo patients are mouth breathers mostly or they might tend to breathe through their mouth because the mouth is open. So just to avoid uh, that, we do not use gas. But oil, we generously use in pedo patients. Okay, when we pedo patients who come with um, sinus openings. Uh, when we give oil, then we have yes. to use suction. Or no. we brush it out with the uh, plain water or... Uh... Usually, how I do is, after application of oil, I tell the patient not to uh, rinse or gargle for another 10 minutes. So the application stays. Uh, even if the patient rinses out after, the, after two minutes also, it is going to stay because the consistency, the viscosity is very high. Or oil or water, they'll never mix. If it's a good oil, it will stay. And uh, the nascent, it is highly unstable, you know. So the nascent oxygen has already done its job while you are massaging or while the coffee cup is at its job. And even if the patient rinses after, it's safe. I tell my patients to wait for 10 minutes. Okay, and I think massaging only helps to, uh, uh, you know, break the zone into a nascent oxygen. No, nascent oxygen is, is released wherever there is anaerobic. See, O3 is going to fall out to O2 and nascent oxygen. So this nascent oxygen is immediately going to pick, is going to be picked up by the site. Any anaerobic condition cannot survive this nascent oxygen. But massaging will give you penetration. Okay, this means as soon as we take the ozone oil inside the mouth, the O3 uh, molecule breaks into O2 and nascent oxygen. Correct, correct, correct. Uh, it's like uh, when it uh, comes in contact with the air, this is the reason? Yes, when it comes in contact with the site. So by the site, what I mean, it could be a surgical site, it could be a pocket, it could be anything where there is a pathogen or pathogenic activity going on. So why do we call it anaerobic? Because anaerobes are those that survive in presence of no oxygen. The minute oxygen enters the site, anaerobes become null. Only power that has that anybody has is aerobes. And aerobes are good bacteria or good pathogens or oral healthy oral flora. But unhealthy oral flora will not survive in presence of oxygen. And that is why this works wonders. Yeah, that's right.
Yeah. So the main thing, even when I said that biofilm, so what is biofilm? It is smear layer. It is the plug and it is calculus when it is unseen or uh, when it's not paid attention to. So main uh, focus of every dentition, I mean, every dentist or every, every clinician is that the biofilm or the smear layer should stop. How will you stop it? If you have good amount of oxygen, the smear layer of pathogenic bacteria is not going to form. Okay, so if we uh, give the ozone oil or ozonated water or maybe gaseous ozone, initially before starting the uh, scaling, will it be more helpful in removing the bacteria and killing them and then giving it after as prophylactic? So in these cases is when we, these are such cases, right? Wherein patient has heavy load of bacteria, heavy load of pathogen. If this is calculus, so we know that the bacterial load is heavy. In such non-surgical periodontitis, we have to administer LA and then start with deep scaling. What we did is we let the patient gargle with ozonated water. So this ozonated water was given before the patient was subjected to scaling or any treatment. Right. Once the ozonated gargles was done, ozonated mm -hmm. water was also used with, along with the ultrasonic scaler and no LA was given. So yes, of course, you can do ozonated water, oil or gas application before you start your treatment for a better patient compliance. Because if here my patient was not compliant, I will not be able to get this. And here I have saved on LA. I have saved on medicines. I have saved on a huge flap surgery. On many other things, and patient is happy that I am not subjected to blade injection or anything. Okay. The only provided factor is he has to pay for the ozone therapy. Okay, so what is like if we uh, if we have done the scaling and we use ozonated oil and water, then do we need to give any painkillers or antibiotics, or we be confident that we're not we should not give? Um, I was also at this stage when I first started and I would give the patient a tablet and tell you call kar dena pehle. Okay. But now I've reached the place and I'm so confident that I don't give the patient any medicine. I send them home. I call them for follow-up after three days, five days, however my follow-up system is. And I ask the patient that did you have any discomfort? Or did you do anything ghar pe? You know, people do home remedies also. So my patients by far touch would have not required any kind of medicine. Okay, so do you prescribe them warm saline rinses or mouthwashes or anything like that? Yeah, so oral hygiene practice has to be put in place. That For that, you don't have any, um, you know, adjunct. What we do after any case, be it a perio case, endo case, any case, we sit down with the patient, we understand what that oral hygiene practice is, what kind of brush they are using, what kind of brushing technique, what paste, what paste, from what time, how, mouthwash, flossing, interdental flossing, yes, no, everything. And we tell them a proper oral hygiene routine and that cannot be replaced with anything because what we have done is a job of one hour. They have to take care of another six months. So, of course, that has to be introduced. Oh, that's good. That's really good. But therapeutic uh, mouthwash or no therapeutic mouthwash, you can take the best for, for your um, patients. I give my patients, depending on what I feel is best, like maybe a chlorhexidine mouthwash, pregnant patient for the non-alcoholic mouthwash, kids hair, the fluoridated mouthwash. So, I have a range of mouthwashes that I love to prescribe. And I start that way. Like I start with a good brush, face, mouthwash and an interdental flosser, like a water flosser, mandatory. Really. Yeah. Okay. And uh, what about uh, these? Um, uh, like, do you tell the patient not to chew from this side or any other precautions? Nothing. No. That's good. Nothing. It's not, even this patient had mobile teeth. To my yes. surprise, after the whole treatment was over, there was no mobility. Well, that's very good. Yeah, no mobility and all his uh, class files were taken care of except a few because it was a very long appointment. This, I think, took us around two hours. So then we told the patient that the other fillings will be done in the next um, sitting.
And like I said, if the patient is not subjected to blade injections and bleeding, the patient is always going to be happy. Yeah, that's right. That is. <laughs> so it's like you made it mandatory maybe to use ozone oil and ozonated water in all the patients? Yeah, I was just talking to sir about it. So I was asking me that how are your cases going on? And trust me, all my cases are ozone cases. There are no cases where I don't use ozone therapy. And I tell the patient that I'm using ozone therapy. It is not done. Mind, mind it. Like this is not about minting money or making money out of it. But you have to start using it. At the same time, make sure that the value or the worth of it is paid to you or you can include it in your practice. That's for example, this is not what I'm saying. If you're charging 10 rupees for a certain treatment, charge 11. Yeah, I just want to know about how do you take about the treatment charges? Just, I don't know it's if, if it's personal or not, but it's for general review. Because yeah, but like I said, we will uh, ratio it. Like if, if the ratio of a certain treatment is 10 rupees, you can charge 11. So if you're charging 1000 for something, charge 1100. Start from there. And mm -hmm. then maybe you can for such full mouth cases for non-periodontal therapy, non-surgical periodontal therapy, you can always charge an extra for your ozone therapy. I have done scalings from 5000 to 10,000 when it comes to ozone. So you can actually start from a scratch, like I said, if your scaling charges are 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, start with 2,200, 1,800 or somewhere there and see what patients respond to, what patient reacts to. And trust me, I don't think patient will ever say no. Uh, and how do you uh, like is, is it manual? There are questions make... from other doctors also. So, can we finish those first and then continue with you, ma'am? Yes, yes, definitely, sir. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I request Dr. Madhvi. It was excellent presentation. Too good, too good. Awesome. Please go ahead. Thank you. Questions. There are questions in the chat box. So, should I read it? Okay. Yeah, so can you help me with that? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Uh, Dr. Rohit uh, has asked, uh, how can we use ozone in orthodontics? Okay. Uh, see, so basically, if you're going to start an orthodontic treatment for a patient, the first thing, your first appointment will be oral profile axis and pictures, pre-op pictures, right? So when you're doing your uh, pre-op pictures and oral profile axis, make sure that you have given an ozone uh, water goggle with it or ozone don't give ozone oil application, ozone water goggles, because it's going to hinder with the bonding of your um, brackets. Ozone water application will help you in a way ki jo bhi gingivitis, if at all pre-op gingivitis if you have, that is going to heal. Plus, there will be no smear layer formation while your bonding process is in progress. Right? Post uh, or while the brackets are in place and every time when your patient comes to you, ortho brackets tend to accumulate pluck always no matter how good the patient is brushing no matter how good the hygiene is because it's a foreign object in your mouth it is hindering with the cleaning and the chewing process there will be plaque formation around every time when the patient comes make sure that the patient chair side goggle is done by ozonated water if you have to take up scaling in between these uh, Try, uh, timeline like your ortho patient is a one and a half year patient every six months if you are going to do scaling then use ozonated water in your scaling process do not use ozone oil or gas because it's not going to give them a long term benefit and you're going to uh, misuse or waste the product after the brackets are removed when you're doing your final scaling and polishing you can give water also oil also and gas also make a choice or do a combination of all that answers the question, sir, pretty much. Yeah, perfect. So, uh, if if you have any queries, sir, please uh, put it in the chat. Yeah, if you have any more doubts. Directly doubt. to uh, Dr. Madhvi. Another question is there from Dr. Rohit again. Uh, um, uh, we can procure the ozone generator and the concentration of the generator. Sorry, sir, I can't hear you. I'm unmute. Yeah. What is the general concentration of ozone and from where we can procure ozone generator? Okay. So, uh, um, 
you can procure the ozone generator from dr sudhi dole he has patented it in india so what better than having him on board here and he is the person to get everything from if you want ozone oil or ozone generator or anything um about the ozone um, molecule so ozone molecule is basically a photo dissociation molecule as in what i mean by that is there is a certain way this ozone is created so naturally or fundamentally the ozone is created in ultraviolet with ultraviolet energy and lighting and that's why we say there is a ozone layer up there now yahan pe apne clinic mein agar ozone banana hai to we need a generator and this generator already comes in a titrated form what do i mean by titrated form that how much ozone do you need for dentistry or how much ozone is safe for dentistry is already titrated in the generator right you need not fall into the physics of it but how the chemistry works is once the titration is under control once the lightning and the energies of the um, generator is under control what you get is an ozone gas how do you know that the generator is producing ozone gas you, any generator could produce any gas avas ane se nahi hota but you will get the smell so the ozone has a pungent smell and that's how you know that the ozone is generated and the generator is working fine does that answer my, your question sir yeah one last final question from the chat yeah. that is uh... oil is used to make ozone oil and why sorry which oil is used to prepare ozone oil ozone oil okay so again ozone oil is patented by dr sudhir dole himself and it is an ozonated olive oil so olive oil in itself has good therapeutic properties when we add ozone to olive oil it becomes 1.5 times more efficient and effective when i say it 1.5 times more efficient and effective i am pointing it out to olive oil virginly and ozonated olive oil again such study is also there that how you use chlorhexidine so chlorhexidine and ozonated olive oil also have a comparative study wherein ozonated olive oil has proven to be better antimicrobial with better better antimicrobial and pathogenic better pathogenic properties than chlorhexidine so the oil is olive oil thank you so much dr madhvi uh, for answering each and every question i hope uh, dr rohit your answers are there uh, anything any queries that uh, please go ahead and uh, dr sishti uh, you can continue with your questions if you have any oh, no sir thank you so much i'm done <laughs> you can Fine. definitely ask us questions we are all no the, those people were asking yeah, in the chat yeah. that's why i interrupted i'm really sorry any more questions from anyone and uh, then we can conclude the topic and if you all can come on the camera uh, yeah i would love to for today's beautiful you. session from dr madhvi thank you so much i hope it was helpful to everybody who attended yeah. it and uh, i am really thankful that i had all yours yes thank you so much it was really helpful thank you so much thank you so much Yes, Doctor Rohit. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. Fine. So it was a very nice session. Definitely, we wish you, Doctor Madhvi, to present this kind of uh, presentation once again on and also. Sure. Also. And I hope every participant today who has attended this lecture will start ozone practicing ozone. so there is no personal intent here that i am a voucher or an advocate for ozone but i personally have seen great results and i hope you also see great results in your practice like i said start with ozone oil and move on to a ozonated practice but ozone oil will pretty much make great difference in your practice Thank yeah three so of much. them are uh, already using just like dr shishti dr okay sir and nice. already uh, dr azhar munshi is there everyone is mm-hmm. and uh, one pg is there dr patel okay. doing the research i just want to know how do you like when do you make the ozonated oil you make it every day and how much quantity do you like just take it high it's like how many liters will you need it i just want to know this okay 
So there is one 5 ml cylinder of ozone that you will get and that ozonated oil is provided and patented by Dr. Sudhir himself. I buy it from him, I take it from him, we do not prepare it. And since it has a shelf life of one year, we keep it in cool and dry place like a fridge and it's pretty much good to go less maintenance and we don't have to take a lot of care about it. It's given to us in a good packaging and you just need to change those sticks, disposable tips. Okay. And what about ozonated water? Like Ozonated water has a, uh, I make it here only because I have an ozone generator. My practice is an ozone practice. And the ozone generator, if you're preparing ozonated one, water of one glass, the life is, uh, the time taken to make it is 10 seconds and the life of the water is 20 minutes. Within 20 minutes, I have to use it. And if I'm ozonating the chair side bottle, which is approximately a one liter bottle, my ozonating time is 30 seconds. And again, the life of it is 20 minutes. Okay. So this means you're ozonating before every patient. Correct. And, uh, so this means your assistants also are also trained. Sorry. Assistants are trained. Your assistants are trained. To, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's ozone. not a difficult job. Once you teach them, it pretty much is a very easy job. Once the bottle is filled, 30 seconds of ozonating the water won't add much of a chaos in the practice. So you are ozonating in the plastic bottle or you're taking a, a, a glass bottle for ozo plastic ozonating? Bottle, plastic bottle. So it doesn't uh, cause any harm to the like Zero. water or the no, plastic? There is no difference happen. that will happen to a plastic bottle or a ka kach ka bottle or anything. Okay, okay, that's good. Yeah, because even the ozone oil that comes, comes in a plastic cartridge. Mm -hmm, that's right. You can also ozonate your chair pipelines. You know, that is a great added benefit here because there is a lot of debris. Whatever the suction unit is taking up is in your pipeline. So unknowingly or knowingly, you are adding up bacteria or pathogen to your patient's mouth if you're not sterilizing your chair pipeline. So usually in... Uh, abroad, there is a system of running hypo or hypo water, right? Here we do not do it. Here there are other uh, agents that you get in the market. You can run that in your pipelines. But if you have ozonated water running in your pipelines, your pipelines are already sterile. And that is how medical ozone water works. Medical ozone water works in, in uh, fields like, say, for example, dialysis. So whatever the ozone water is running, I mean, whatever the water is running is ozonated water, sterile water. You, you name it ozonated water, you name it sterile water, it's one and the same. Right? So if you are having an ozone generator and you can make ozone water, you are going to make your chair also sterile. Mm. Oh, that's good. Any more questions? Yeah, there is a question from Dr. Patel. Uh, yeah about reattachment in chronic periodontitis after scaling and root planning. Like we, uh, we lose the gingival attachment because of mm. uh, debris and calculus and mm. uh, foreign bodies. Okay, so after doing the treatment, how patient can gain it back? Okay, uh, you were saying the regrowth. So you know one very good fun fact is like your skin and your gums. The, uh, they are so forgiving and they have great healing properties. So what happens is because of the presence of calculus or uh, any uh, foreign body particles, food or anything, your gingiva or your gums are pushed down. They are pushed to a level wherein it is called gingival recession. Once that um, hindrance is removed, you have done scaling and polishing, the scaling has removed everything, your gums are going to bounce back immediately. Once the ozone oil is applied, the conditions have become aerobic. Anaerobic activity is gone. If you have to cut your skin for 7 days, mein, agar wo heal ho sakta, your gums will heal in 5 days. No metrogel also given. And if you're giving ozone oil application, give it to the patient, ask him to apply every day, 3 times a day, you will get your uh, good zen. You know, the zenith will form back. So that answers the question. Did I get the yeah. question right? Yeah, Do uh, yeah, Dr. Patel, uh, I hope you got your answer. Uh, if any more queries or anything is there, go ahead uh, or else uh, let's conclude the session.
Yeah. So we are getting messages from each and everyone that it was a very impressive session. Uh, thank and you, thank you all. From it Dr. was great Martin. meeting you all. And yeah. And you have uh, documented so many cases. That's a really appreciating thing. Like you have right from scaling to yeah. uh, periodontitis, gingivitis, everything. And even you included ortho uh, thing also in this, which is actually part um, of this. So great presentation, okay, yeah. Madhvi. Thank you. Thank you, you so All the best. Sir. We have a uh, next session uh, as webinar, uh, ADC webinar 4.0 for full mouth rehabilitation by Dr. Sanket Shah on 2nd April at the same time, 3 p.m. We will be sending you links in your uh, uh, WhatsApp and we will uh, we have recording of this uh, session and we will be posting this on YouTube. So if anyone has missed out on anything or anyone else is willing to uh, learn from this session, they can attend it on YouTube channel and we will share the links to you all. Thank you. So thanks a lot. Thank you so much. Sir. And end this meeting. Have a nice day too. Thank you. You all have a nice day too. Yeah. I'll end this meeting, Dr. Madhvi. Okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Good day. Good day. Bye. Good day.